Um, but now we move on to our media picks for the month. And and uh, this month, uh, I I think I just wanted to just dive in immediately and say that I very much enjoyed seeing my media pick of the month. And that was a couple of weeks ago. I went to go and see uh, Tomb Raider in the cinema. Um, it was uh, a spur of the moment thing. I was feeling a bit under the weather, but uh, but I had an offer of a, uh, a discounted ticket. And um, uh -huh. I, def you know, I definitely appreciated the discount. And in a more or less empty space, about eight other people were in the room. I watched uh, Alicia Vikander portraying Lara Croft on the big screen. Is that you say about eight other people? Is that suggesting that maybe the film hasn't been as successful as people maybe hoped it might be? No, no, it was it was like it was like a midday showing. It's one oh, of the okay. advanti oh. advantages of working for myself from home. I can every now Absolutely. and then just go. Oh yes, I'll go to that. Um, so you and me was, both. Uh, you and me both. Exactly. <laughs> it's um, the film runs to about 118 minutes, so it's basically exactly two hours long, and uh, so far it has uh, it's taken a worldwide uh, gross of 247 million off a budget oh. of 94 million dollars. So uh, I think I think we're, we're almost certainly in for uh, at least one sequel. And I, and it's I think franchise this, time. Uh, we see, and I hate that word again. You know, all this, you know, back to Game of Thrones. And um, I really don't like the, uh, the 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 idea that everything has to be a franchise. But um, in the case of Tomb Raider, it's it's a lovely bit of fun. I I do enjoy the computer games. I very much enjoy the 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 way the series went in 2013 with Crystal Dynamics uh, re rebooting, uh, reimagining the Tomb Raider uh, formula with elements of Nathan Drake's um, uh, uh, computer game uh, PlayStation um, franchise as well in there. Um, but uh, crucially, I mostly I appreciate the portrayal of uh, of a modern British person in the film. That may sound strange, but unless you're British, it can be difficult to understand that in Hollywood films, we're often undersold or oversold or whatever well, let's the case may be traditionally in hollywood movies it's the british british actors who play the nazis no, ironically yeah either either they're not <laughs> either yeah, either they're nazis or they're they're the nefarious sort of you know beard stroking bad guy and even when when the whole thing is a british production or british and so setting for example sherlock holmes the good guy robert downey jr is an american even though he's a british uh detective and the yeah. bad guy is played by a Brit but but beyond, beyond the stereotypes of Britishness in American films uh, this production I really liked because they showed a sort of contemporary way of living in London okay it's a bit exaggerated in terms of what she get what she gets up to but the fact of the matter is people of that sort of age early 20s to early 30s which I'm still just about um, <laughs> they uh, are not finding it easy to, to, to live in London um, money is an issue, rents are an issue. Uh, life can be hard, especially in the wake of the of the financial collapse. And so, not only how she's living, but also where she's living. For example, we don't see really the eye of London. We don't see Parliament. We see Camden Town. We see a more bohemian, slightly cobbled, um, but also tarmac uh, London. We see. The I mean, police. the kind of London that archaeologists actually live in. Exactly, exactly. It's this sort of London that 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 that, that I recognise, and I find I found that really pleasing. It's an odd thing to pull out and to recommend the film based upon, but but I appreciated that. And beyond that, uh, if you are a fan of the computer games, you're you're going to find something in this film that you will enjoy. Uh, don't expect, don't expect you know sections drawn. Don't expect artifacts recovered. Don't expect any uh, much in the way of responsible archaeology. In fact, frankly, there are there are explosions in this uh, when it comes to the archaeology. Uh, but it's good. It's a good reframing of the Tomb Raider world. And and as archaeologists, you have to at least acknowledge Lara Croft and Indiana Jones at some point. And I'm now waiting for the academic blog or academic paper saying that Lara Croft Tomb, Tomb Raider should be banned because it's damaging to the image of archaeology and shows disrespect to native peoples. Uh, well, actually, there, uh, there aren't any native peoples. Oh, they're not in this one. Oh, right, okay. No, no, no. I think the island, the island is more or less empty. That Disrespect on. to Camden Town, then. Okay. <laughs> well, potentially, yeah. I mean, there was a little bit of London stereotype in terms of the, um, um, 
you know, the uh, the, the the cheeky, you know, Londoner kind of, you know, all cheeky, the band, yeah, yeah, I mean, the banter some, and this kind of thing. Got me, yeah, right, right. Yeah, all right, yeah. mate. So, yeah, right. <laughs> but no, I like it. And uh, I had that and... Laura Croft in the back of my cab once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, she's not as tall as she looks on on the computer game. Um, but no, uh, it, but you know, I did like it, and also. Uh, from an archaeological perspective, since this is an archaeological um, podcast, allegedly, uh, allegedly, I um, also appreciated some of the, the the aesthetic nods to. They're showing, for example, elements of medieval Japan. Um, so uh, towards the end of the film, there was some nice art design going on in the film as well, uh, and set design. I, d I don't want to, to spoil anything, basically, but it's 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 good. It's be it's better than the other two made of films in terms of content although i do like the other ones as a guilty pleasure this one i don't have to be quite so guilty about so uh what 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 have you picked this month then well until last night i was going to be all pretentious and go with the bbc's flagship cultural documentary series that's running at the moment civilizations Okay. Which is yep. Um, um, Civilizations. I mean, it, it's a big budget HD uh, production on the longer lines of uh, you know, Blue Planet and Life on Earth and, and so on. It's got three very capable um, celebrity uh, academic presenters: Simon Sharma, Mary Beard, and uh, uh, the social historian David Olasuga. Mm -hmm. um, and it's setting out to look at the place of art in cultures across the planet and how the... Uh, so so very art, much an emphasis on the S then, civilizations. Civilizations, whereas in, in, in the, the, the previous incarnation of the series, it was inspired by a series that was made uh, 50 years ago by the mm. BBC called Civilization. Mm. And on that occasion, it was really uh, about Western art and the place of western art in in, in, in world culture it was fronted by a you know, the, the, the the classic of the time patrician white presenter uh, sir kenneth clark who'd been director of the national gallery and um where the, the, the new version uh, it goes in, in, instead of concentrating on western culture it goes all over the world we look at everything from benin bronzes to buddhist prayer halls um is islamic mosques uh, and, and, and and calligraphy um it looks at the impact of Western culture on um, cultures of other peoples in Africa and uh, India and, and so on. Um, and uh, but at the same time, there's a there's a there's a bedding a grounding in the uh, 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 in the Western traditions as well. You've got somebody like Simon Sharma who made his name as a historian of the Dutch Republic in the in the 17th century, to, um, talking about the development of uh, the, the use of landscapes in art and, and, and so on and how the uh, in, 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 in Protestant Holland the you know, religious art from churches was banned uh, as, uh, as idolatrous and, and therefore artists starting to create icons of landscape like, like tulips windmills tulip fields and windmills yeah okay, and that no, I mean, I mean <laughs> a big there. so anyway, it, 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 it look you know the money's on the screen. It looks great. There's lot. It, it's made in. It's, it's in HD. There are lots of mm -hmm. drone shots. It's beautifully shot. Um, it's had some criticism for uh, on, for some of the segments being a, a bit shallow or a bit contrived. Um, it's it's a it, it's a primary in world art. That's what it's designed to be. And I say so I was going I was just going to concentrate on that. And then last night we had the premiere of uh, another um, serial documentary series, um, and it's really made me look at the two together. It's another landmark documentary series. Um, it's called Kunk on Britain. Kunk. Kunk on Britain. Um, Kunk on Britain, okay. Philomena Kunk is the creation of an actor called Diane Morgan. And basically, if you imagine somebody, if you imagine Simon Sharma or, or, or actually better, Professor Mary Beard, mm -hmm. but if you imagine Professor Mary Beard as being from Lancashire and not having a single brain cell in her body, that's Philomena Kunk. Okay. 
Um, and what what it does, it takes all the tropes of a landmark documentary, right down to the, the, the you know the the, um, the drone shots of the landscape and and, and so on that, that we see now, mm-hmm. and it subverts them absolutely brilliantly. Um, it's it, it's a um, uh, as I say, it's 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 a, a a brand new series. It's looking at the history of Britain sort of chronologically. Um, and um, Philomena gets to interview uh, experts, uh, including um, uh, the, the the great uh, Francis Pryor about the the Stone Age. <laughs> um, who, and, 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 and to, so she she uh, she, she asks um, she asks Pryor. Um, so um, why do archaeologists uh, um, why are all the things from the past underground? And he replies, "Well, they weren't always underground." They were once on the top. Then archaeologists dig them up. Um, so it's, it's it, sounds, of... it sounds as though it's in a similar sort of vein to uh, to something like Spinal Tap, that that, that can only it... only have been produced if you love rock music. If that's I mean, absolutely. Uh, if... And it absolutely. understands how, it, it, to, how to take the how to take, ab, take the ab, ab, it. Absolutely. Actually, F- Philomena Kunk, uh, she began as a character on uh, Charlie Brooker's Screen Wipes, if anyone's familiar with those. Yeah. Mm. And um, this is a spin-off from uh, fr- fr- from that. Uh, she's a... <laughs> she's a um, wh- and, and what that does, brilliant... What, it, it, uh, Charlie Brooker's going to say the lead writer on it as well, um, okay. or one of the lead writers on it. it, 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 it it's satire. It's satirizing, yeah. satirizing the media. It's satirizing the way history is presented. Uh, for, for, for example, um, the Cernabas giant is described as hill filth. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, um, uh, the, the, the Bayer tapestry is exactly, it, it's exactly like you were there, except it's in wool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, okay. um, the, 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 but also, I mean, it, it, it's very sharp. It has some wonderful one-liners along the lines of... Um, the, 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 the end of Roman Britain, uh, the, the Britons threw off the unelected bureaucrats from Rome and immediately celebrated by entering the Dark Ages. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, I, I have no idea how that's possibly remotely relevant to the UK today. Absolutely. I, I can't, it's, I can't it's, an, it. it's an arcane historical reference that nobody <laughs> possibly can. Uh, no, I like uh, that. And also, I, 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 uh, I think... Uh, it is. It, it's precisely in this way that uh, that that a good, in that sense, a good criticism is also levied against how history is presented. This idea of, as you hinted at, this idea of, of a patrician uh, gentleman, a sir, you know, Dewsbury, uh, yeah. telling a grateful nation about their history, um, is very much antiquated. And, and and this is obviously, in that sense, tackling something which isn't entirely relevant still, but also actually reminds us not to go back too much as well to, to sort of to presenting history like that uh, 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 absolutely I mean, in, there's so, a... well, in so much as sorry in so much as like simon sharma sure. definitely has learned that lesson in the case of civilizations he's part of a his style has developed you know oh very much so yeah, very much yeah, so yeah. um but i mean this, this is the, yeah she, uh, she, um uh the, the, the philomena character she, you know she she, she wears uh, a smart tweed suit she has her hair swept back in a sort of uh, she she looks like a sort of academic presenter and mm-hmm. yet it's it, it, it's wonderfully subverted my, my almost my favorite bit in the uh, uh, and it wasn't actually a straight archaeological archaeological or historical joke in, in in last night's first episode um she gets to interview um and a lot of it is based around uh spoof interviews and you're never quite sure whether the people she's interviewing are in on the joke or not Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the character's well enough known now that they ought to have been. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. but anyway, uh, to, but uh, on this occasion, she's interviewing um, Robert Peston, who's the political editor of ITN News. Okay. And um, who's well known for his sort of um, his mannerisms and sweeping his hair and, and, and things like that when he's doing a piece to camera. And they're sat in a in, in a in a viewing theatre, and she says, "What's the most political thing that's ever happened in British history?" And he hums and ahs and thinks and whatever. And there's this extended shot of him trying to try to answer this question and then she just says throws in well the second most political then <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah it, it, it's if, okay. you, if you like that kind of view that it's sublime it, it could be marmite some people hate mm. it I, I personally loved it and yeah. looking forward to the next episode so um 
if you want the the the, the, the sort of the, the standard uh, flagship documentary version, watch Civilizations. There's some good things in it. Um, but if you just want a really good take on the modern media and how the modern media treats history and mm-hmm. uh, whatever, uh, Kunk on Britain that's running on uh, on the BBC for the next uh, well five weeks, uh, and, and it'll be available on iPlayer for people that can use iPlayer. Very good, very good. I think uh, possibly a bit too cringy for my wife. Though. I think she might she might go a bit. Sort of, uh, she doesn't like when people aren't in on the joke but i think i might enjoy it yeah okay. cool okay uh well there we go that wraps up the watching beef for march 2018 uh thank you as ever for your time andy and uh, i suppose just just finally i'd like to encourage people at home to feel free to send in any potential stories that you want us to examine over the course of the next month or indeed to, to comment below or send us questions or whatever by email essentially we, we we don't just want to be telling you what what's important. We also want to uh, want to engage with whether or not you guys uh, with the so basically with the things that, that you guys want to want to see discussed as well. So feel free to to comment and expand our horizons as much as anything else. Um, as ever, I guess until next time, everyone do take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.